Welcome back. Thanks for joining me in another video in our Intersight Managed Mode or IMM Expert Series. This video is an important foundation for the rest of the series, as first we'll set a baseline for what we mean by management modes for a UCS domain, and second we'll also compare and contrast the order of operations in configuring a UCS domain based on the different management modes. This comparison is really helpful, especially if you're a longtime UCS user and familiar with UCS Manager and are looking at or in the process of making the transition to Intersight Managed Mode or IMM. Without further delay, let's dive right in. These are the three management modes for Cisco UCS that we'll be covering. Standalone Mode, UCSM Managed Mode or also known as UMM, and Intersight Managed Mode or also known as IMM. Let's take a look at each one in a little bit more detail. First up, we'll take a look at standalone mode. This mode specifically pertains to Cisco UCS C-Series rack mount servers that are not connected to Fabric Interconnects and not managed by UCS Manager. While each C-Series server does have its own management interface called CIMC or SIMC, it can become cumbersome to connect to each server individually for management operations, especially with a large number of C-Series servers. For that reason, each C-Series server can be securely claimed as a target into Cisco Intersight so that administrators can leverage the policy framework to configure and operate across their entire fleet from a single interface. Now in this series we'll focus mainly on servers connected to Fabric Interconnects. However, it's important to know what standalone mode is and understand that this mode will use some of the same profiles and policies that we find with IMM as well. Okay, next up we'll look at UCSM Managed Mode or UMM. There are a couple key things to point out with UMM. You can see here the servers are connected to a pair of fabric interconnects that are configured in UCSM mode, which means that UCS Manager is running on the pair of fabric interconnects and is available. Because UCS Manager is available, the policy and operations are driven from and owned by UCS Manager with UMM. UMM is really the mode that UCS has operated in mostly since its inception. Now we can still claim this UMM domain into Intersight. Even though the policy and operations are really owned at the UCS manager level, Intersight allows you to claim multiple UMM domains and perform some lifecycle operations. You can see here some of them on the screen. Things like launching KVM, upgrading firmware, and also cross-launching UCS manager. In the case of UMM, however, an administrator would still need to launch UCS Manager in order to configure and deploy servers and perform various other functions. Finally, and certainly not least, Intersight Managed Mode, or IMM. The key thing to remember with IMM is that the fabric interconnects are configured in Intersight Mode, and what this means is essentially that they are not running UCS Manager. In fact, there is no UCS Manager at all with IMM. In IMM mode, all policy and operations are driven and owned by Intersight. So therefore, you must claim your pair of fabric interconnects or your IMM domain into Intersight, and then you can configure and manage from within the Intersight platform. We'll talk more about the actual order of operations in configuring a UCS domain in just a minute, but I want to reiterate again two key differences, especially between IMM and UMM. The first difference is the mode that the pair of fabric interconnects are running in. And you have two modes. We have UCSM mode and Intersight mode. Literally one of the first questions when you set up a new pair of fabric interconnects from the CLI is which mode do you want to run this UCS domain in. The second difference is which entity owns the policy configuration and what interface do you use for operations. Again in UMM mode that is UCS manager and in IMM mode, that is Intersight. Plain and simple at a 10,000 foot level, that is the clear difference between UMM and IMM. Of course, there are nuances and other lower level differences between the two, and we'll get to more of those uh, as we go throughout the entire video series. So now that we've level set on the different management modes for Cisco UCS, let's now compare and contrast what it takes to configure a UCS domain focusing on UMM and IMM modes. What you see here in blue are the generalized steps or order of operations that need to occur in order to configure a UCS domain and the attached servers. Let's talk about each step in the context of both UMM and IMM modes. 
The first step to configure a new UCS domain is to complete the initial Fabric Interconnect setup via the console. This is when we assign basic management network configuration for our Fabric Interconnects. While doing so, as of firmware version 4.1.3b, you will be asked which mode you want the Fabric Interconnects to run in. You will enter UCSM mode for UMM mode or Intersite for IMM mode. The remainder of the setup is fairly similar no matter which option you choose. Just follow the on-screen instructions to complete the setup. The next step in configuring a UCS domain is claiming the UCS domain into Intersight. Now for UMM domains, remember that claiming into Intersight is optional, however it is recommended in order to aggregate management across multiple UMM domains and take advantage of other connected features Intersight provides. For IMM domains, Intersight is mandatory because remember you do not have UCS Manager with IMM, so Intersight is required in order to create policies and configure the server infrastructure. Next we need to configure our Fabric Interconnects. What do we mean by this? Well, in the initial Fabric Interconnect setup, we essentially configured our management IP address settings. However, here we are talking about configuring things like our uplink and server ports, creating port channels, enabling breakout ports, and more. To do this in a UMM domain involves a series of settings within the UCS Manager UI. However, there are no policies that govern this configuration. Alternatively, with IMM and an IMM domain, in Intersight we now have what is called a domain profile and a set of associated domain profile policies which govern this Fabric Interconnect configuration. Note that a domain profile is mandatory for configuring an IMM domain. Next, we can optionally configure settings specific to our blade chassis. These include items such as power redundancy, fan control settings, SNMP, and more. In a UMM domain, you configure these settings within the UCS Manager UI. There are no profile or policies that govern this configuration. For an IMM domain, we have a new chassis profile and associated set of chassis profile policies which configure these settings within IMM. Note that a chassis profile is optional and not required for configuring an IMM domain. Finally, we can now configure our servers. From a UMM perspective, server configuration is accomplished by creating a service profile and a set of service profile policies within UCS Manager and assigning that service profile to a physical server. Similarly, with an IMM domain, you create a server profile and set of server profile policies within Intersight. The concept between the two is very much the same, however, some of the policies and terms have different names between UMM and IMM. So admittingly, there is some learning curve when going from UMM to IMM, and that's really what this video series is all about. So, if you've hung in there and you've stuck with me until the end, Hopefully you've gained a little insight into what the different management modes are for UCS and also gleaned some of the overall similarities and differences when configuring a UCS domain in either UMM or IMM mode. Again, we'll continue to revert back to some of these slides as we move forward with additional videos to set the context and tie it all together within the IMM Expert video series. Thanks for watching.